Hello, everybody, and welcome to my presentation on the development and adaptation of an employment integration program for people who are visually impaired. My name is Walter Wittich, and I am an associate professor in the School of Optometry at the University of Montreal. Uh, I have been part of this team uh, that Mahadeo has been putting together for some time now, and so I'll He's asked me to present specifically on this project that we completed a while ago because it relates to a project that we're going to conduct as part of this team grant. I would like to begin by acknowledging that Montreal is located on unceded indigenous lands. The Kalniyeh-Kahaga Nation is recognized as the custodians of the lands and waters from which I present today. And Tatage commonly also known as Montreal, is historically known as a gathering place for many First Nations. Today it is home to a diverse population of Indigenous and other peoples, and I want to express my respect for the continued connections with the past, present and future in our ongoing relationships with Indigenous and other peoples within the Montreal community. What I also have on this slide is a map of Canada with indicating the various First Nations regions as they distribute across the country. I've always found that very interesting because, of course, these regions do not uh, adhere to the regular provincial borders that we are used to. I'm also going to quickly starting out with a disclosure slide. Uh, I'm supported by the Fonds de Recherche en Santé du Québec through a Cherche à Boursier Junior 2 career grant, uh, which allows me to dedicate 75% of my time to research. And I, even though I don't have any conflicts of interests to declare for this specific project, I do have peer-reviewed funding from a variety of federal and provincial organizations in Canada as well as in Europe. And uh, I've been working in the past with eSight Eyewear together with uh, My Tax Canada, and I've also received funding from the CNIB in the past. So the problem that brings us here today is, of course, something that everybody on this team is terribly aware of, and that is the discrepancy in the employment rate of people with versus without disabilities. What I have on the slide here is a figure from a book chapter that Natalie Martiniello and I published a year ago. Uh, what Natalie has done here is she's graphically displayed this discrepancy between the employment rates in various countries. What we have on the y-axis is the chronological age of the people that have been surveyed. On the, sorry, on the x-axis we have the age, and on the y-axis we have the employment rate in the population at each of these age groups. And I'm highlighting here specifically uh, the example of the United Kingdom, where at age 35, you have an employment rate for the population at roughly 80%. But if you look at the visually impaired population, this is as low as 30%. If you look at the same country at the age of 50, employment is in the high 90s whereas for people with a visual impairment, it is just under 30%. Uh, so this discrepancy is huge. This is not unique to just one country. This is similar in most developed countries and even higher in countries of lower income. Now, one of the possible solutions that I want to discuss today is some work that I've conducted together with Donald Watanabe Liz Scully and Martin Bergevin uh, at a time when I was working at the MAB Mackay Rehabilitation Center here in Montreal before I started at the university. And this is a specific program where we developed and adapted an employment integration program in the Montreal context. There are various pre-employment programs out there in the world Karen Wolf is likely a name that many of you have heard of before. Uh, she developed a pre-employment program at the University of Texas that consists of 15 training modules 
I will not go into the depth of these today, but I encourage you to look this up. It's a very, very interesting program. Uh, one of the aspects that I personally very much like about this program is that it operates as if you are employed. So if people are expected to show up at 9 o'clock in the morning, they get an hour for lunch, they are going home at 5, the program itself is administered as if you are going to work. There are very clear expectations in terms of dress code, for example. Uh, and so it, it, uh, it mimics in certain aspects what happens in a, an employment context. The Royal National Institute for the Blind in the UK has adopted, developed and refined and customized this a little bit more. And we decided to follow this path and at MAB Mackay also adopt and customize this program and then add it as what we call a bi-directional adjunct to our rehabilitation program. And let me explain what we mean by that. In the general context of a visual rehabilitation program, in this case in Montreal, uh, there are various building blocks that make up this rehabilitation process. And as we go through time, which on this figure here is again on the x-axis as we're moving forward, different levels of hierarchy of services are offered as you go upwards. So we start out with low vision assessments, with optometric exams, basically we're figuring out what is the visual situation of this person. As you go forward, uh, there is a psychosocial evaluation as well both for the client as well as the people around them. And it is through uh, assessments of needs that the process moves forward in order to uh, facilitate activities of daily living, orientation and mobility, communication skills, computer and technical aids uh, skills. And these are all services that are offered within the adult programs, in this case, of the rehabilitation center. So we're taking a specific focus on programs for adults because we are in the context of employment. This does not have to be uniquely done in this age group, but for the purpose of the development and adaptation of the program, this was the starting point. What is now added as a bi-directional component to all of these services that are offered for vision rehabilitation is that the employment reintegration program, in this case we come back to the idea of reintegration, uh, gets added and what is bi-directional here is that of course the employment program feeds from the rehabilitation programs but it also can be that during the employment reintegration program we discover that there are some rehabilitation needs that are not yet addressed and so for example there may be a need for some specific orientation and mobility service that can now be added in order to improve uh, employability. What we decided to do as the context of the development and assessment of this program is we wanted to have various ways of measuring its efficiency and effectiveness. And uh, that was specifically important because of the resources that are being invested into this program. Uh, in order to justify to the administration that it is worthwhile to be doing this. And so we called upon what is called the tape measure. Uh, this is uh, a tool that is built for the assessment of employment preparedness, specifically for persons who are blind or partially sighted. It was developed by Alexander Shaw and Deborah Gold at the CNIB. Uh, also, again, a publication I highly recommend. Uh, it's worthwhile to figure out uh, what is in here. I will give you a mini overview, but there is much more depth to this. The tape measure or tool to assess preparedness for employment um, exists in two versions. There is a version that is really used by the researcher, which is the UA version that I am speaking of today, but there is also a practitioner version that is really more geared as assisting in the evaluation of the skill set, specifically in the rehabilitation process. The different domains that are being measured by the tape are uh, subdivided into scales. And so you can have these subscales on various aspects that are relevant to employment. This is technology, support, 
disability, communication, upbringing, work history, language abilities. And then for persons that are actually in the process of looking for work, there is a scale on the process of looking for work, networking, job search strategies, and targeted job search. And for those who are actually in employment, there is a subscale for access and support. I'm bringing up an example here. Uh, the questions are usually scared, scaled from one to five uh, in the language subscale. For example, the three questions that make up this item are, I am unable to read, or oh, I am able to read in more than one language. I am able to write in more than one language. I can speak more than one language. And so the cumulative score gives us an idea of the capacity level of this person. So let's jump right in. What we ended up doing is we recruited nine people. And these are, uh, they were specifically chosen at the time because we decided to make this a work reintegration program. So these are people that had been employed previously. <clears throat> so we did not start from scratch. This is not in this case uh, an evaluation of a program for people that are entering the work uh, environment for the first time. Uh, almost all of these individuals have progressive diseases or diseases that appeared uh, during their adult life and therefore in interfered with their employment ability. Um, examples here are retinitis pigmentosa, for example, or diabetic retinopathy. So we have nine people that were recruited. They ranged in age between 18 and 47. And they had quite a range of acuities and visual field abilities, a uh, range of educations. And most of them were legally blind. Two or three of them were low vision. The key results of our outcome uh, report in the end that of the nine people that we recruited, eight completed the program. Uh, the person that dropped out was somebody who needs to like or needed to likely go through some more psychosocial support in order to be psychologically ready for the employment experience itself. I found this really fascinating because this more emerged during this process of administering the rehabilitation program in the format of employment. You need to get there, you need to get back home, you will have a lunch hour. All of these structural pieces were actually part of the barrier in this case. Of the eight that completed the program, five found employment after the program was complete. Of those five, four maintained this employment at eight months follow-up. Now I need to say those four, one was working full-time, three were working part-time. There were also four of the cohort that returned back to school in order to increase their employability. And it turns out two of the three that were working part-time went back to school part-time, and two of the people who did not find employment uh, went to school part-time. We can just discuss some more of these details if you want to go a little bit deeper into this. Uh, all of these results are published in the British in the Journal of Visual Impairment and Blindness uh, if you want to discuss these in more detail. I want to give you two examples of the tape measure scales of what has happened in terms of the evaluation. The first one here is the communication score scale, where we have a statistically significant improvement from pre-rehab to post-rehab. Uh, if you have visual access to this figure, basically what we're looking at is we have an assessment before the program began, one assessment after, and then the third data point comes from the eight months follow-up. You can see visually that the majority of the lines go up on the tape measure, meaning uh, scores are getting better. Now, what is interesting is that the biggest change is from pre to post employment and for roughly half of the participants this uh, score is either maintained or even improves at eight months, whereas for the other half, it starts dipping down again a bit more. However, never as low as the starting point. So that's good news. Um, 
What is also interesting in this here is that you can see a standard line that is inserted at the tape measure level of 3.9, I believe, out of 5. 3.9 is the standard measure we would use for comparison to visually impaired people in Canada that are currently employed. So when we now compare our scores to the standard, you will see that all our participants started out with a score below the standard and only four of them either reached or exceeded the standard after the training. On this slide, we have the same pre-rehab, post-rehab and eight months follow-up division, but now for the technology score. It turns out that this was not statistically significant. It was a st uh, statistical trend, um, meaning it went in the right direction. It just was not as strong as the previous scale, where the communication scale really looks at reading, writing, and communication in terms of employment. The technology scale really looks at uh, the, the use of devices and adaptations in the context of employment. Again, you will see that almost all the lines go up and they continue going up after the program. There are only two individuals whose scores slightly dip again afterward, but it's not really worth mentioning. Um, again, we have a comparison line for uh, the Canadian standard at roughly 3.9 out of 5. Now, what's interesting is here is that the large majority of our participants actually had scores above the standard comparison to begin with, they were all quite uh, capable in terms of technology. Three participants started below. Almost all of them made it up. We only have one individual who never quite made it above the comparison score, but this individual score continued improving throughout the eight months. So now, the reason I'm bringing this up in the context of our team grant here is that Mahadeo and I decided that it would be time to reverse this approach and to ask the question, is there an employer and an employer's environment actually ready to incorporate a person with a visual disability? Here we are putting all of this effort into training the individual with the visual impairment. There's also a lot to be work, work to be done in the context of the employment environment. Can we measure the ready and employability welcomeness, so to speak, of the place that is offering this employment. And so we decided that we would create an employer version of the tape measure, since we already have a researcher version and a clinician version. Let's see if we can assess the employment environment to see how that can be adjusted. The way we're going to go about this is that Mahadeo and I will co-supervise a student at the master's level in our program in Montreal uh, starting September 2021 who will be responsible to develop and test this um, the content of the employer version of the tape measure and the plan and the proposal of this you will likely see emerge as we go along for the coming year. So to wrap up I thank you for your interest and for your time I have a long list of people here that I say thank you because nothing that I do, of course, I do alone. And if you would like to know more about what goes on in our world, you can find me on Twitter at Walter Wittich, or you can see some of our research at CCNA17 underscore CCNV17. All right. Thank you. And I'll talk to you guys soon. Bye.